Hello, welcome back to the garden. Today is Sunday the 4th of June, and as you can see, my pumpkins and squash are finally out in their final growing positions. Now they went in on Friday the 2nd of June, and um, it's probably the latest that I have ever planted out my pumpkins or squash before. Um, but I definitely think I've learned something this year because I'm one of these people that has always kind of looked at the back of the seed packet and gone on um, kind of the information it says on there. So, you know, the earliest you can start sowing your um, squash is around about March. And then the earliest you can start putting them in the ground is maybe about April or something. And I'd always kind of thought that was what you had to do. And I didn't, think I had to do that but you know it's written down and you kind of want to go with that you want to be the first to get your crops in the ground you want to be the first to harvesting them and stuff like that and um that was something kind of I always went by and I also used to have a garden in Bristol and now I'm in South Wales so our climates are actually quite different so usually what I do is kind of sow them under cover in March and then as soon as they were big enough you know they had their kind of um big first set of true leaves I'd want to get them in the ground but usually then they were quite susceptible from pests um, slugs and stuff and still susceptible to the climate because it'd be too cold so this year things have been a little bit different I've been much more busier and um, I'm probably having the best ever growing season in my home garden um, but as a result of having loads of other things going on I've left them get really big so when I laid them out on Friday to get them in the ground they were huge and because they'd been in the greenhouse they were so leggy um but that has worked to my advantage this year so for me i don't think i am ever 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 i say this i'll probably change my mind next year um, but i'm never going to plant any of my courgettes squash pumpkins anything like that in the ground before june ever again last year we had a frost a really late frost like on the 7th or 8th of june which we still could have but i'm hoping that because this climate at the moment is so hot we haven't had rain for i want to say a month possibly not a month i'm not sure um the ground is um you know any bare earth is totally cracked all over so you know hopefully we're not going to get a frost um but before i excitedly talk to you and show you about all of the um squash and where they are and why i'm growing them in the way they are i need to mow the lawn up here because even though it started to really slow down its growth i haven't mowed for two weeks and i really need the grass clippings i've almost finished um putting grass clippings like a first kind of layer of grass clippings all over the garden i've had um really good amount on the new raised beds that i've got so my new raised beds now i've had a layer of brambles and dried wooden material they've had one layer of uh, they've had one layer of grass clippings so the next thing i need to do is put another layer of brambles all over i've got a ton bag there with lots of dry material so that will be going over next this week um and then after that i can kind of start the process of again and put lots of grass clippings on there if, if the grass actually grows. Um, so today with the grass clippings that I've got, I need to put those over my potatoes. I've almost um, kind of put one layer over the potatoes, but there's still quite a lot of um, earth that is, is bare. And I really don't wanna be watering things um, too much if I can. Having that mulch really does make a difference. Um, so I'm going to quickly get on with that and as soon as I've finished mulching that area I will then come back to you and show you the pumpkins and squash varieties that I'm growing this year. About two and a half, three years ago, I think it was now, I actually did a video on um, using grass clippings in the garden and five different ways that you can utilise them. So if you're interested in using grass clippings and you've not used them before, please go ahead and watch that video. I'll put it above in the cards now um, and down below in the description because it's so beneficial. And if you're somebody that still actually waters your lawn, you probably find you get quite a lot of grass clippings. So it's definitely something that is so beneficial and useful um, in your vegetable garden. That's done. So now let's get onto the exciting bit and have a look at my pumpkins, what varieties I'm growing and why I'm growing them in the areas that they are. 
So we'll start at what I'm calling the pumpkin patch this year. It's about 10.30 in the morning now and the sun's coming round. So um, if I leave it any later, the shadows are going to be so bad up here. Um, I'm calling this the pumpkin patch because I've got six <laughs> squash growing up here. Um, but this is just a temporary thing this year. I've actually got another metal raised bed that will be going on here. Um, but I think it will probably get put here in, well, the autumn over winter I can start filling it so um I've gone for some um, lovely grow bags. These grow bags are peat free and I think I paid about £2.50 for each of them. And I've gone for two squash in each one. And then in the middle, I've also put a nasturtium. These nasturtiums are called carousel. So I think they're a mix of different colors, but pinks, um, and things like that, which is not the usual colours that you would get. Uh, the reason I'm sowing these this year is because hopefully they're going to create lovely ground cover up here, um, but also you can use them in your salads um, as well to make it look pretty. So that's why they're growing right in the middle. And then with the two squash either side, um, in the front one here, I've still left the pots up here because I've wanted to remember what they were. I'm really rubbish with labels. So um, if I tell you what they are on here, I can come back to the video when I come to um, harvesting them. So the first one here and here are both Harlequin. Okay, Harlequin is um, a slightly kind of smaller squash um, that is really good for baking and stuff like that. And the reason I've got quite a few Harlequins this year is because they germinated really well. So um, I've not wasted any of them. Um, behind we have, um, here we've got a Crown Prince. I thought I had about three or four of those growing this year, but this Crown Prince here is the only one that I've got. So I'm really hoping I get at least two off there. They grow fairly big. So even if you have two pumpkins that you can, or squash that you can harvest, you'll probably find you get really good amount of meals out of that. One Crown Prince will easily kind of probably make four really big meals. And then over in this one here, I've got a Jack B Little. Um, Jack B Littles are a really small climbing variety. At the time when I put this in, I didn't realise that this was a Jack B Little. I thought it was another Crown Prince. Um, so when this starts growing a little bit bigger, I might possibly like kind of try and fashion some kind of like uh, rope or something up to the polytunnel and um, grow that there. Then I have another Harlequin here, just behind. And then this one here, is mammoth gold. I've got another mammoth gold growing, I think, in a pot um, that hasn't gone out yet because it looks really different from um, the other ones. So whether it's a rogue seed or whether it's a random melon growing from the home homemade compost, I don't know. Um, so they are growing here. What I've done is, um, well, you saw at the beginning of the video, I put cardboard down first. Then I also mulched um, on top of the cardboard with the leftover wood chip that I had. Um, the reason for that is just to hold in the moisture. But I just don't know if you noticed as well at the beginning, I actually stabbed holes in the bottom of each of these grow bags. The reason I've done that is so that um, as the um, cardboard breaks down, the um, roots can actually penetrate into the soil above. It's really thick, heavy clay here, um, but they will be able to kind of move down underneath. And because I'm using the halos here, um, when I water them, it's going to really saturate underneath and all of the wood chip on the top is going to help keep that moisture in. So um, I'm going away for two weeks in August and I do have somebody looking after the garden for me and coming and watering um, every few days. But it should mean that these really hungry um, crops will be able to actually make use of the soil underneath. And then in the autumn, as I said, when I come to harvest them, we can just easily take these grow bags up and um, I've already started um, kind of helping mulch and build this soil underneath. And here is where I'm growing my courgettes this year. We've gone from bright sunlight over there to lovely shade, so hopefully you can see okay. Um, I'm growing two varieties of courgettes this year. We've got um, Gemma, which is a yellow variety that's an F1, which I picked up from a shop. And then behind me, we've got two, which are um, Dorato di Napoli, I believe. And I think those ones came from real seeds. They came from a friend. Um, and these ones came from a shop. And the reason that I'm growing two varieties and they're two varieties that I didn't grow from seed is because I planted or I sowed about 12 seeds early in the season and they didn't germinate. Whether it was because it was 
not the right conditions um, they picked up a pest and disease from a homemade compost I'm not entirely sure but none of those germinated so I really panicked um, I had a voucher for the local garden centre because I'm like a part of their garden member you know their members club um, so I went and picked up these two they were the only varieties they had so I grabbed those and then potted them on and left them um, you know until June and then the ones behind me came from a friend so I'm really pleased that I've managed to pick up um, two varieties and I'm growing them up here we get a good kind of six to seven hours of direct sunlight in this area um, but it kind of comes um, in about an hour or so till the end of the day also I don't know if um, I've told you this before but I also have um, planted my cherry plum just over on that fence there I know I was talking about it before um, but it's over there and when I actually started this whole area created this area I put my potatoes in here and I didn't think that I was going to grow anything else but when I made the pathway there was kind of this good amount of space um, but I do have potatoes behind it so who knows how they're going to do here um, but when I planted these in the ground really kind of hard clay so they are in the ground they did get a water before a water after and I kind of put a little top dressing of uh, peat free compost on the top so who knows how they're going to do um, but also I have um, put a carousel a nasturtium in between those as well so be really interested to see how they grow in this area this year let me know what varieties of courgettes you're growing because I'd be really interested to know and here you have the last lot of squash I'm growing this year. These are both Jack B. Little and again they are in a grow bag. Grow bags look really ugly I think especially <laughs> in um, the actual garden rather than a greenhouse um, or down the allotment uh, but the reason I've gone for this is because this is grass underneath and I didn't want to dig it and um, you know make a big mess I just wanted them to go straight in and grow I grew squash here the first year that I ever grew vegetables in the garden and I had Jack B Little here I think I got 20 Jack B Littles I've got this trellis here and it just climbed across it really nicely this area of the garden gets so much sun nearly all day and um hopefully fingers crossed they're going to do well in here and if they actually do well I think that I might slowly turn this area into um, a new bed that I can grow in every single year um, in the middle again we've got the nasturtium and both of these actually are doing so well again I stabbed holes in the bottom so hopefully um, they'll be able to penetrate into the ground below and looking at these squash I don't think it's going to be long now before I start getting some flowers and I think they're going to quickly just spread across here so I can't wait to see how they do um, but there you go that is all of the squash that I'm growing this year oh wow just found a little shady area in the garden to finish this video and just as I've sat down I found a little egg isn't it amazing I have no idea where the egg could have come from possibly um, there is a nest growing in this bush behind me but seeing oh I've just broken it but seeing little shells like this just shows that nature is all around us and at this time of year we really shouldn't be um cutting our hedges or anything like that because there's lots of little babies the next generation of helpers are um, coming through um, but anyway thank you so much for watching today's video I really am next week going to try on my next videos to film at better times in the day so you can actually see um, where I'm I'm filming I really hope you've enjoyed watching today's video I've definitely enjoyed making it I would love to know what squash and pumpkins that you are growing this year I've got loads of harlequin in and to be honest when I actually looked up what it looked like again I was a bit disappointed I'd much preferred lots of crown princes and the other bigger tastier pumpkins but well I say tastier I've never tried harlequin so we'll see how they do this year I know that pumpkin patch doesn't look <laughs> very good at all and I'm calling it a pumpkin patch and when you think in your head of what a pumpkin patch or certainly I would um, think what a pumpkin patch would look like I would think of like a fairy tale acre field with beautiful pumpkins growing all over it and that certainly doesn't look like it um, but it's a name that I'm going to use this year so you know what I'm talking about and um, anyway I'm going on now so thank you so much if this is the first time you're watching one of my videos please do hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you're notified of all of my latest videos as ever um, YouTube have some videos up now on the screen that they think you'll like so I'm going to leave you a pumpkin harvest from my first ever year um, I love making that video and I loved harvesting all of those so I will leave that above one of my first ever 
years in the garden and I was new to filming then so it's not a great video but please go ahead and watch that and I'll catch up with you in the next episode. Bye!